Salamat Paji, and that is Balinese for good morning. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you all here and be home again. As many of you know, I've been on vacation and i um, happy to be back in the States, but I'm still on island time. It's one o'clock in the morning tomorrow where I was. So <laughs> uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I am the spiritual director here. And um, we have an interesting morning for you. Does this feel a little out of sorts? <laughs> I feel like I should be, you know, looking at all of you here. I think it's better for the side camera today. Not so good for the camera in the back. We have the labyrinth set up. We had a labyrinth walk on the solstice on Wednesday night. We had a good group here. We decided to leave it up and we're going to be doing an, a chakra walk at noon today. Um, and that'll be in place of the um, conscious connection. And you're welcome to stay for that after the snacks. We do ask that you keep all the fraternizing over here <laughs> with your food and refreshments as the labyrinth is a kind of sacred space for us to do spiritual practice together. So I hope you'll stick around and, and join us for that, and uh, Kathy's story will lead us through that process. Meanwhile, I'm here to talk to you about embracing self-care. Yeah, I've been doing that. Yeah, definitely. I've been doing that as I uh, traveled 20 hours down south and across the, the world to a little island called Bali in Indonesia at spending a wonderful time with another CSL community, actually. Um, it, was a, it was really amazing, and, I want, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, but right now, today we're rounding out our monthly theme of embracing self-care by talking about um, personalizing the infinite. I watched the Reverend Judy and Reverend Bruce's talks, uh, my gosh, I've only been home since late Friday night, so it was yesterday that I was watching their talks, and Reverend Judy did a wonderful job of, he really went deep. Thank you, Reverend Ju Judy. It was a wonderful talk about finding joy even in our sorrow, and um, that was really powerful for me to listen to, and, and, and that really is part of self-care. And then uh, Bruce, oh man, I loved listening to Bruce's talk. He, he talked about a lot of the concerns that we have in the world today, and yet he was able to bring that into a place of self-care and, and having a, a finding that um, the pleasure in giving of ourselves and our higher consciousness out back into the world as a way to take one possible step towards uh, creating a world that works for all. It was a powerful talk, and I really appreciated it. And so when we look at this idea of personalizing the infinite, um, it's really about the creative process, personalizing the infinite. Now, we, we, with those of you that have studied this philosophy of uh, Centers for Spiritual Living and Science of Mind, oftentimes you will hear that the infinite is impersonal, that the law is impersonal, and all that means is that it is an equal opportunity system and that the law treats everyone at the level of their willingness and ability to accept their good. So it's impersonal in that way. And yet, our job is to personalize our experience of it, to have a more authentic experience with spirit as means of our manifestation. We each are manifestations of spirit, individuated points of God. Individuated points of God. And I think it's interesting that often we engage the um, creative process from this understanding of that wonderful quote from Ernest Holmes, that there's a power for good in the world greater than you, p power for good in the universe greater than you, and you can use it. But I think when we come to a place of really being 
right-sized and in perspective with the world and our work to do in the world that really there's a power for good in the universe greater than us and it can use us. When we get to that place of really beginning to understand that we are all instruments of the divine and that the divine has, what is it, how many billion, seven billion opportunities to express itself in individuated ways. And so as we look at this idea of individuating the infinite, of personalizing the infinite, we have an opportunity to express the divine. But oftentimes, we get stuck in our human experience of this is my life, you're living your life, he's living his life, she's living their life, they're living their life. We see things as separate. It's like, it's like almost an addiction to this attachment to separation of differences, of seeing each other as um, different and apart. And yet the one big thing that we have in common is this creative process. The creative process, if you're new to this philosophy, it sounds like an art class, but it's not. <laughs> it's so much deeper than that. What we understand is that, that everything is created twice, first in consciousness and then in form. And so there's a creative process that we're all working with, whether you are aware of it or not. And it uses your piece of the one infinite reality that you carry around in your consciousness to create your reality. And so our work in this teaching is to begin to understand what's living between my ears, what's in my heart, what are the belief systems that I'm carrying around, what are the things that I, that I truly believe in that the divine filters itself through to have our individuated and personalized experience of the infinite. And so that creative process, when we begin to understand how it works, when we begin to understand the law, when we begin to understand the power that we're working with and we raise our awareness to it, well, we can shift our reality. We can change our life. We can, we can move from one place in our life to a completely different place with the opportunity of a greater awareness and a greater transparency in our lives. I remember when I first came to Centers for Spiritual Living, I was fascinated by this idea that I was not my mind. I didn't understand that. I thought that I was my mind. I didn't understand that my mind was actually a tool that the divine uses and that I get to use to create my experience. That was a very new concept to me. And that was a hard concept to grasp. But I will tell you that after a little practice and a little time with this philosophy, I began to see the, the squirreliness that would often happen in my mind, and I began to understand that my thoughts were things, that I could pay attention to what I was thinking, that I could actually cultivate a different way of thinking. That's using and working with and being used by the creative process. And so as we talk about this idea of the creative process and how we personalize it, it really is bringing the divine into our everyday life. Which brings me to a perfect opportunity to share with you a little bit about my trip to Bali. For those of you who live under a rock, <laughs> Bali, <laughs> Bali is in Indonesia, and it's that, it's that same place that Elizabeth Gilbert wrote about in her book, Eat, Pray, Love. She really helped to boost the tourism for Bali. And, and one of the things that I, I learned about Bali as I, as I entered this culture was that it was uh, an amazing amalgamation of spirituality. Bali, um, Indonesia in a, as a whole, was practicing many, you know, at, from, big, from 
I don't know how many thousands of years ago, but was practicing Hinduism and Buddhism in various places. And in the 1400s, there were some wars. The Muslims came in and they were able to convert many of the, uh, much of the country of, country of Indonesia into Islam. And so some of the Buddhist and Hindus escaped to some of the off-setting islands, and Bali was one of them. And when they came to Bali, the Balinese uh, welcomed them with open arms. And that is the culture. The essence of the culture is this welcoming, this loving kindness. And so Hinduism and Buddhism fit in very well with the with the indigenous culture that was there. And, and so it's this amalgamation of Hinduism and Buddhism and animism. And so I want to I wanna share with you what animism is. I'd never heard that word before. It's, so I want to read it to you. Animism perceives all things, animals, plants, rocks, rivers, weather systems, human handiwork, and in some cases, words, as animated and alive a culture that believes that they need to know and want to bless the gods and guardians and thank divinity for everything they do. The Balinese make little offerings every day as well as have ceremonies where they just celebrate life and continue to remind themselves that there is divinity in all things. Wow, and that's what I experienced. They have this wonderful relationship with nature and this deep respect for the earth and this deep respect for each other. And they make these beautiful little offerings every day that, they, that are made out of the very things they find in nature. They're little square baskets that are made out of palm leaves and they put flowers in them of different kinds that represent the, the four directions and also represent the different gods. They, offer, they make these offerings out of the goodness of their heart and then they they practice the w wonderful tenets of Buddhism where they practice loving kindness. Everywhere I went, I was welcomed. Everywhere I went, there was a desire to be present with me and to, um, and to our group. There were 28 of us, and um, we, we actually learned how to pray like the Balinese, and we learned how to make the offerings, and. Um, and we had some retail experiences. And, and there really, I had, there was no shift in any of it. Like, you know, it was, it was like this continuum of grace. And I felt carried through the entire thing. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that when I went to Bali, my real intention was to get some perspective because I am a human doing. <laughs> Most of the time, I am doing, 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 doing. Oh, and then there's some more doing, and then there's some more doing I forgot to do, and then I got some other doings that I got to do. And so to be able to step out of that current of doing and be in that land of devotion, devotion to life, devotion to each other, devotion to the earth, um, it was, it was life-changing, and it really helped me to remember and to come back to that place. And it happens for all of us, doesn't it? We, we have these moments, these moments of clarity when we remember who we are, when we remember why we're here, when we remember that our purpose is to love each other, our purpose is to love the planet. Our, there's all kinds of destinations out there. That was one of the things I got really clear about. And I've said this before, but I just kind of dropped down at a deeper level within me. But there's all kinds of goals and destinations and things that need to be done. But it really is about the journey. It really is all about the journey. And, and life can be messy sometimes. I was traveling with Mary Casa. And when we got up early and we were sitting on the seawall, um, our, our little bungalow was on, on the uh, north side of the Bali on the black sand beach. And so we were sitting on the seawall watching the sun come up and talking about life. And 
the little, a man and his little dog were walking by and, and I was, just as I was saying to Mary, it's really all about love. It's not the, it really is the journey and not the destination. It's all about love. Like that little puppy, that's love right there walking, walking before us. And the dog kind of meandered over, was looking at us and was looking us right at us and it squatted down. And you know what it did. <laughs> and we laughed till we cried. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's love. <laughs> it's sometimes it's messy and it's very real sometimes. Uh, yeah, and so when we are personalizing the infinite, when we are doing that job of embracing self-care, it's... It was, the Bali was a beautiful example of how self-care and loving kindness really created this beautiful community. I want to tell you now, people live simply, but I, there's no object poverty there. The crime is really low. The, the tourism has really boosted the economy, but the good seemed to be equal everywhere. There weren't any rich people in Bali, but everybody seemed to have what they needed. The, the families live in extended compounds uh, where they have the many generations. And some of the families, I, I visited a, a community that did woodworking. I visited a community that made jewelry. I visited a community that made clothing. And all of this, all of these things that they did were part of their devotion and part of their practices in everyday life. And I will tell you that being in that, air, in, that, in that environment, now our trip had a few mishaps. Um, there were some things that didn't quite go as I had planned, but I was in an atmosphere where I could just roll with it. Jack Canfield says, has a little formula, he says E plus R equals O. Events plus our responses equal our outcome. And so when events come up, our opportunity as we're personalizing the divine, as we're working with the creative process, is to make a choice about how we want to respond to things. To make a choice. We always have a choice, even when things are not going the way you want them to go. Even when things feel tragic, we have a choice about how we're going to move through them. And when we make that choice, when we choose that response, then we actually ha can determine the outcome, regardless of the conditions and events around us. Yeah, that's what, that's what personalizing the infinite means, that opportunity for us to walk through life knowing that everything is in divine right order, knowing that there's a divinity to it all. I, um, I want to venture to say that it's an art form to be able to watch your experience, how you're experiencing events and to choose how you want to respond to them. It takes practice. It takes willingness. It takes a uh, desire to experience life as a divine walk. And so I want to close this month's topic and invite you to bring the infinite into your everyday life, to get on island time. <laughs> Be like the Balinese. See that everything you're doing is a divine expression of the one. Know that every time you say thank you, it's a prayer. Consider that as you are uh, moving through life that you can choose to be kind even when it's not necessary. Ask yourself when things don't go your way, where is the divine in this? And then when you when you get an inkling, when you get a clue, move your consciousness in that direction. I have a little morning prayer that I, 
I like to bring, it's so simple, and when I feel disconnected or discombobulated, I'll, I'll re-start re, uh, this practice. And it's, it's just simply waking up in the morning and saying, God, let me see myself the way you see me. Let me love myself the way you love me. That's all it takes to get ourselves centered so that we can be in a place where we can make choices about our responses that are loving towards ourselves and then acting from that place of self-love and self-care and moving out into the world from that grounded and centered place so that every person we see, everything we touch has an obvious expression of the divine to it, an obvious shade of love, an obvious shade of consciousness, an obvious reflection, that's the word I'm looking for, an obvious reflection of the divine. Hmm. Thank you very much. So let us pray. Knowing that the divine is in all life, that there is no place that God is not, we open ourselves to spirit. We raise our awareness to the reality that already is. We let go of our daily concerns. We center ourselves grounded in love, devoted to that expression of love. We move through our week seeing the divine everywhere in the easy places and the not so easy places in the good times and the challenging times trusting that the divine is working in us through us and as us and that our personal, individuated peace of the divine is the same as everyone else's, and it's up to us to engage it, to be present with it, to slow down, to be love wherever we go. And so it is, is, in, it is in this moment that I know for each one of us that we, we elevate our mind and our heart and that we are present. We are present with ourselves. We are present with each other. And we do our part to create a world that works for all. I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful to know that there is indeed a power in the universe and that it is as close as my breath. I simply surrender this word knowing it is true. And together we say, and so it is. <laughs>